ton of big, big, big saves. Back and forth. That's going to be an icing call. So the faceoff will come down to St. Ange's right. Trevor St. Ange and Scott Romano battling each other here with back and forth uh, stonewall saves. Yeah, rocking a hard place at both sides of the <laughs> rink here. <laughs> Out to the blue line, shot blocked right there. Danny Perslow fires it in again in front. Rams couldn't get a hold of it. Back out to the blue line. Tommy DuPont fires one in. It goes wide. Might have been blocked in front. Hard check behind the goal. Anthony Vitale out to the blue line. DuPont takes a look. Fires. St. On save. Clears it to his right. Rams still controlling. Now it's picked up by the Indians. As they break out, we have essentially a almost a two on one. Long shot and save. Almost a two on one. Good, uh, good back check there by Bausch. That was, it was good back checking, yeah. He made up for whiffing. Turned it into at least a two on two, anyways. Still able to get the shot off. Face off to Romano's. Left taken by Vendetto for the rim shot on goal. Romano save. Skips back out to the blue line. Cross ice blue line stays in. Richard trying to knock it off the puck. Spinning shot in front. Save Romano in a crowd. That puck changed directions about five times and he kept his eye on it and came yeah, up I big. Lo I lost track after about five. <laughs> Face off to Romano's right. Vendetto taking the draw for Cheshire and Kyle Block for the Indians. Controlled by the Rams. Vendetto wrap around. Over to Vale on the wing. Vale chips it out. Indians dump back in, delayed offside, and they come back in on the four check. Vale, uh, check that. Valillo able to. Oh, he's called for a hand pass. Valillo. Uh, Almost a three on one. Yeah. He's, uh, <laughs> he's appealing the call, but to no avail. I have yet to see an official in any sport change his call based upon an appeal from a player <laughs> on the surface. Yeah, I mean, these aren't the replacement refs. <laughs> All righty, face off to Romano's right. And they chase Klanik out. Lima taking the face off now, controlled by the Rams. Danny Perslow. Long break out to Hauser, the speedster. He looks, he shoots on orange save. Two saves in a row. He picked up his own rebound and shot it back. Rams still keeping it in. Hauser still controlling now. Some of the fans uh, trying to send in <laughs> assisting calls. Oh, pass right through the slot. Nobody there. It pops out down into the Ram end. Gathered there by Perslow. Perslow over to DuPont. DuPont ahead on a rink wide. No one home. It's missed by the Indians. Looks like Block skating for it. For checking. Perslow able to get it out. Ahead to Klanica. Klanica's got Chris Stevens on his left. Stevens tries to chip it back to a blue liner who is not there yet. And ahead to Kyle Block. Block carries in. He's got with him Conway. Conway's parked in front. Stevens gathers it up and skates it out. Rink wide pass to Bausch. Bausch down the right side. Spins, tries to stop cycling it in the corner, and he's still got control. He's checked off the puck momentarily. Stevens working with him. Out to Valillo. Shot! Just wide. It looked, actually, I think uh, St. Ange got a. Right toe on that one. Still in. Blocked in front by his zone shooter. Yeah. Great effort there by uh, Vitali. Rams still controlling Rams. behind. Puck in front. Bouncing still loose. Nobody there to get a stick on it for the Rams. Manzer reattacking now. Is charged in. Wild tilt here at Wesleyan University tonight. Rams now controlling. Stevens skates it ahead. 
Looking to make a pass. Instead, he's probably going to just have to dump this one in and does. Vale now charging in, trying to four check. Three on two rush. Manzer lets it fly, but offside. Even the typically uninterested Hamden team is out in force to sit and foregoing their warm-up opportunity to watch this game. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, following this game, not, not uh, streaming, but here at this facility following the Cheshire uh, Watertown Pomperaw game is Hamden taking on Xavier tonight, which should be a good D1 tilt. Both teams, I'm sure, Jeff, you saw a lot of in your career at uh, Notre Dame. Play, played plenty of uh, games just like this one against these teams. <laughs> uh, we beat Xavier 1-0 last year here at Wesleyan. Certainly. Uh, Another game no one could score. Notre Dame, Xavier, Hamden, Fairfield Prep, four of the top teams in the state every year. Great programs. Hamden. So we have a penalty here, folks, as we're gabbing away. Where did that come? I didn't even see that. We'll wait for the official announcement, but there is an Indian, and I believe it is uh, Jonathan Manzer, is now in the sin bin. Coach appealing the call. Must have been something no one could see. I don't know what it could have been for. Manzer not happy with the call as he whacks his stick into the boards. The official staring him down. Not sure who he's yelling at. Actually, uh, now there's two in the box. We might have a double minor. He might have gotten called for an unsportsmanlike on top of it if he mouthed back. Anyhow, face off to uh, St. Ange's right, controlled by the Rams. Out to the blue line. Back into the circle. Vendetto looks, hits the pipe on the short side. Vendetto again, skates into the middle, pucks in front. No goal! The puck was loose. St. Ange had lost control of it. And I'm not sure how it finally got control, but uh, it looked like... Uh, here comes the call and the penalty. John Manzer, number seven. Two minutes for unsportsmanlike. Uh, so he had, he had a misconduct, and two minutes will be served by uh, his friends in the box two there. Teams. Yeah. Right, so it's a double minor on Manzer. And we have a timeout, uh, I believe, Cheshire. With 7.27 remaining, uh, 143 on Manzer's penalty, and he is still a little hot under the collar as he's banging his stick. Watertown, Watertown has four guys on the ice. Though. Is it a misconduct in a minor? It's pro I believe, folks, this is a double minor. It's, uh, I think it's a two, two minute penalties. Uh, if it's just an unsportsman like Jeff, then it would only be a two, correct? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Right. If it was a misconduct, he'd be a two and a 10, right. Regardless, it's, uh, we'll see if we can get that call for sure. Yeah, that's why they have uh, that's, that, that's, that's what I was thinking. They have four men on the ice. It's a two and a ten. I believe Manzer acquired the ten for an unsportsmanlike, and his buddy down there is serving as two. So I don't know Manzer, what, Manzer's essentially done for the game. Yeah, I, yeah. unless we uh, have some OT minutes here. 7.27 left to go. 7.27, right. So Manzer's gone for ten, and then his two-minute is being served by, uh, I can't quite see the number over there. At any rate, that's the story. Power play for Cheshire, who has had a uh, huddle here to see if we can get some direction for them. Puck is controlled. There are four Rams fighting for it along the board. And the Indians still able to get it out to the neutral zone. Rams re-attack now, dumping it in. Playing the old dump and dig. Three Rams along the board. Despoto now fighting for it along the back line. 
Taken there by Murphy now, who skates it out, but not out. Kept in check nicely off the puck, DuPont was. There's a no call there. Tackle. Better watch out here as uh, the Indians fighting hard. And we have, the, that's long lead pass. Was touched, and here comes a leg trip, I suspect. That's not going to make uh, Coach too happy. Offensive end penalties are just not good. Interference. I don't, I don't know. Is it either interference or... Uh, I, th I think he yeah. crossed his arms. <laughs> Regardless, it's an offensive end penalty. Uh, looks like Vendetto going. That remind, I don't know if any of you watched the, uh, the Notre Dame University versus Minnesota at Minnesota last night. Um, one of the Minnesota players did pretty much the same thing, got an offensive zone penalty on the rush, got frustrated, and took really an identical penalty. Shot, knocked down in front, chipped out by Stevens, Indians controlling, four on four hockey here. Shot save Romano! Big glove save there in a crowd. Valillo now fighting for it with uh, Harwell, and we have a penalty coming. Kyle Block. Kyle Block of the Indians going into the sin bin for a slash. This gives the Rams now an opportunity for another 23 seconds for a four on three opportunity. At that 23 seconds, they'll get one player back and be back to four on four. Rams controlling now. Valillo tries to stuff one in the short side. St. On says no way. There's just nothing going for either team here. Block for slashing at 8.53 of the third period. Almost 40 minutes of play, and we have nothing to show for it. In 12 seconds now, we'll be back to four-on-four four hockey. Murphy skates the puck out of the zone. It's intercepted here. Klanica gathers up the puck. Comes in. He's got little help with him. Tries to snap off one at the top of the circle. Centering pass. Nobody there. Two-on-one. Two-on-one now. He's got to get back. Toe drag, spinning shot, shot, no, save Romano! Wow. Another That's shot blocked by Lima. Unbelievable end-to-end -end action. Two Lima spins, stops, shot, blocked in front. Nobody there to help him, and St. Ange covers up to control play. Save of the game right there. I don't, I don't even know if... I don't, I don't even know if Romano got a piece of it. I, I think he did. Oh, I think he definitely did. Yep. You know, being a goalie dad, Jeff, you, you have an eye for these things. <laughs> Indians able to get it out of the zone. We are 4-on-4 four four hockey right now with 5.05 remaining on the clock. Indians gathering control. Crazy, Dump. crazy sequence of plays. No icing called there. Interesting. Finally, the uh, the Hamden coach corrals his team and tells them to actually go start warming up. They're, they're so interested in the Cheshire Watertown Popperot. Oh, missed pass there. Rams D able to just chip it up and break up that play. Indian sending in two four checkers. Chris Stevens now skates out of the zone. Playing very well tonight. Nice lead pass up to Vendetto. Vendetto looks to the middle of the slot. Another shot right in the belly of St. Ange. Hector the rejector. Might be what they modeled that, uh, that device out of here. Is Trevor St. Ange tonight. I, I've been very impressed with this play so far tonight. Great goaltending both ways, folks. 4.24 remaining. 17 seconds remaining on the power play for Cheshire. Vale won the faceoff temporarily. Indians fire it down the ice, relieve the pressure. 
Nesdale comes back, however. This is probably one Scott of Scott Romano fires it up ice. I've had to see about probably at least five or six power play line combinations so far by Coach Sunquist. I don't know if he knows something we don't. Think Murphy still, still controlling. Tr still trying to get people that are going to put the puck in the net. Wow. It looks like an Indian goal. Romano had the initial save, but the puck must have still been loose. Kind of a slow motion mess there in front. Wow, so the Indians have found the scoreboard, have lit the light here with 3.53 remaining. The stripes really seemed hesitant on that goal. He didn't really see the, what the call was until it, the puck was in the net. I it looked like the Ram goaltender was appealing that someone was in the paint, but that, that, that won't work because the puck was there as well. Yeah. So it was kind of tough. St. Ange covering up now, trying to control play. The Rams now with the... Indians goal scored by number 10, Kevin Murphy, assisted by number 19, Bizier. That's Murphy from Bizier to give the Indians a one goal lead here. Lima now knocks the puck down, carries it back in, tries a rink wide pass to a left wing that was not there. Puck travels through center ice. Back into the ram end. Block controlling, carrying it all the way back into his end. Tommy DuPont now tries to skate in. Breakout pass, three minutes remaining in the game, folks. This has been a barn burner. Rams now controlling, Stevens. Into Vendetto. Vendetto fires about a mile and a half high. He had that puck on its side and it just took off on him. And a tough late period goal for the Rams to play with here. 2.30 left. St. Ange playing extremely well. Shot in, deflected up into the, uh, well, I would say the netting, but there isn't netting behind these goals. Puck's out of play. 2.30 remaining here in the third period. The Indians lead the Rams 1-0 on a goal by Kevin Murphy, assisted by Bizier. Face-off controlled by the Indians. Dumped towards the net. Romano steers it behind his goal. Controlled there by Murphy. Shot. Knocked in front. Harwell gathering it. Harwell again, still got it, kicking it forward. Now the puck's fired out into neutral zone. Hauser chasing, knocked down by Valillo and chipped out by Lima. Right into the hands of Narciso. And dumped in on St. Ange for a save. Chester's doing just about anything to try and get in uh 30's head right now, They're going after him, icing him, slashing him. None of it seemed to work in right now. We'll keep an eye on the, uh, the Rams end of the ice, see if they pull here. 152 remaining. Cheshire needs to put two men on the puck right now and start sending people. Two men. Manzer fires one in. Fired back out to Vendetto. Vendetto streams down the right side. Gains center ice. Shot! Easy save for St. Ange. Another attempt towards the net. It was well wide. Kurzlow chips it back in. Into Hughes. Hughes gathers it in the center ice. Now back over to Bausch. Bausch skates to the slot. Checked away off his stick. Just misses. Empty oh, net. Empty net. Puck goes wide. Shot came on the Indian side of the red line. So that's an icing call with 104 remaining. 
The Rams' goal is wide open. See, the Rams haven't figured out that. Oh, there they go. Yeah. I was going to say, they, uh, <laughs> they sure. pulled the goalie, but they haven't taken advantage of it. That's they right. Five, five skaters on the ice. That would be a horrendous mistake. Coach Sunquist over there with his board uh, discussing what he wants done here in this power play attempt. Well, I think uh, a good timeout. The, uh, that first line for Cheshire's their main offensive producers, and they they log the vast majority of the minutes. A little breather, a little water, it could, it could help them out a little bit. Cheshire's next opponent next Wednesday, the 16th at 6 p.m., right here at Wesleyan uh, University against Tritown. It's actually, uh, well, actually, if you count, uh, if you count the uh, game we had at, uh, where were we? At Quinnipiac, at Quinnipiac Shrink against Weathersfield, that was actually a home game for the Rams, so that began a five-game home streak, home stand. Yeah, that, we'll forget about that one. Shouldn't even be talked about on the air. Ooh. Cheshire, of course, carrying uh, what some might start to describe the curse of one-goal games here. Yeah. Trying desperately to erase that. Got to get a lot of pressure. Controlled by the Rams for a second. One minute remaining. Puck goes the length of the ice, but no icing. Gathered there by Perslow. Perslow up ahead. Intercepted there by Murphy. Murphy looking for an empty netter. Goes wide. There's six Cheshire players, but only one of them. Six Cheshire players, and then six. Rink wide to Hauser. Hauser's got control. Loses control of it, St. Ange covers up. Electing to go for the faceoff and controlling the tempo of play, the uh, Indians goalie, Trevor St. Ange, covers that puck up on a dump in. Six on five. Skaters controlled there by the Rams. Dumped in in front. Rams have some posted up players in front, but they've got to get the puck. Control of it now by Hauser. Shot by Hauser, blocked by in front. There it is, a score! The Rams have tied it up with 13 seconds left on the clock. They took their time, but hey, I guess it works. Wow! What a barn burner. That was a crowd in front, so we'll wait for the official score here. It might have been Tommy DuPont. I'm not sure, but we will wait to see. 13 seconds left. One to one tie here, folks. Here comes the announcement. Tyler Lima credited with the goal. Lima from Klanica. Klanica, yeah. So, with 13 seconds left in this game, down one nothing, Tyler Lima crashes the net in front Takes a pass or a shot and a rebound from Klanica and Lima buries it to light the lamp and tie this thing up with 13 seconds left, folks. So we have a two-minute timeout. <clears throat> Excuse me, basically a two-minute intermission here. The ice is not done uh, after, uh, after uh, regulation here. So they will skate a four-minute, I believe, a four-minute overtime. Is that correct, Jeff, in high school? Uh, sometimes eight, but um, we'll no, see here. I don't know. So we are going to overtime here. Sportingnewsct.com bringing you a barn burner here from Wesleyan University. Dick Naramore alongside with uh, Jeff Bausch and on camera Scott Duff. 
And uh, speaking with Scott at the moment, uh, we have Greg Gletterer from the Cheshire Herald. Always nice to have Greg here. He's the master of stats. He can probably tell you uh, for the last eight years how many goals every Cheshire player's ever had. He is definitely the jewel of Cheshire when it comes to sports reporting. Does a great job. Unfortunately, we don't have any internet access here to uh, apprise you of other scores, but uh, basically a game that started roughly the same time as this one was West Haven at Simsbury. Weathersfield played Southington Granby Windsor Locks at 4 o'clock. At 5.30, Milford Co-op was playing St. Bernard at uh, the Norwich Shrink. Another interesting matchup, North Brantford Trumbull. I bet that's going to be a good one there. That started at 6. Yeah, I got some score. West Haven leads Simsbury 2-0 after 2. And... So, we are just about ready to start this uh, overtime stanza here. Our score, 1-1. Eight minutes. Eight minute, you were correct, Jeff. Eight minute overtime. One overtime, folks, in uh, high school hockey. After eight, if it remains tied, it is a tie. So here we go, drop of the puck. Controlled by the Indians, momentarily, and dumped in. And that was an icing call. Hamden players moving their stretching into back where they can see this game. I believe that's a uh, seven o'clock start, so they're good luck. <laughs> they have six With minutes. No whistles, they won't make it. <laughs> Be a little delay in the next game here at Wesleyan. Face off to St. Ange's left. Bausch and block on the face off. And a uh, little delay here. Uh, the official was over at the scorer's table checking something out. Cheshire's Bausch, Vendetto, Stevens, DuPont, and Purcell. Okay, there's the drop of the puck. Indians able to get it out. Young gathers it over on his. Uh, Far boards. Uh, there's a penalty coming on Bausch. Another hesitation call by Stripes out yeah. there. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Tough decision there. I mean, uh, boy, overtime game. You almost want to say you got to palm that whistle, but uh, that was a that was a tough one. His stick got tied up in the legs. He basically had a free reign into the zone, so probably one that had to be called. Regardless, it was called. 7.37 remaining in overtime. Two-minute minor for tripping to uh, number seven, Alex Bausch for the Rams. Indians on the power play. Face off to Romano's left. Chipped out to the blue line. They feed in. Checked off the puck nicely on a feed. Who's that working it there? That was uh, Murphy. Centering pass, and the Rams able to chip it out. Murphy skating back. He's got Hauser on him. Hauser beats him to it, yeah. and he's held. There's what speed will do for you, folks. There's what speed will do for you. Great effort play by Hauser there. He was beaten to the puck, and uh, Kevin Murphy for the Indians... Uh, Basically took hockey exception to that. And uh, he uh, tied him up and actually held him there. Oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where the second guy I don't. I, Watertown just keeps, keeps putting people in the box because they want to be there, I guess. Yeah. Oh, it's the 10 minute. All oh, right, right. Well, that, that could be a factor. He, could come, right. he can come back in for this overtime. So Murphy in the sin bin. 
Two minutes for holding. We are four on four. There's a pass in front shot. On, right on the doorstep was Klanik on a great feed from... Uh, now Klanik on the feed, Nesdale. The yes, shot. it was Nesdale right in front. He had pinched in from his defensive position. And St. Ange rises to the challenge right there. Controlled Chesh now. Chesh has been using the points offensively well today. Vendetto uh, stealing the puck. Snaps one off. St. Ange got a piece up off his shoulder. Rams keeping it in. Down low to Klanica. Klanica looking to center. He does, but it's blocked. Now a breakout. That's number 13 block carrying it in. He's got Derek Bizier with him. Bizier now looks to gather the puck behind the Cheshire goal. Does so in the near corner. Valillo fighting to get control. And does. Gets it out barely. But controlled in the neutral zone by the Indians. Chip back in. Nesdale fires it right back out. Over here to Hughes. Hughes skates it in. Gains the center slot well wide on the shot. Vendetto able to chip it out. Now we have a uh, too many men penalty coming. Yes, we do. Serious mental error there by Watertown. Yeah, and it, and it wasn't necessarily the coach. Coach, was, I saw the coach yelling at his player. As so. he should be. He's, uh, Mistake. Not, yep. Not too happy. That's Kyle great. Block going in the sin bin. His face matched the center stripe of their jersey for a little bit there. Rams now with a golden opportunity. Five on three, 5.37 remaining. They got a minute and a half of, of five on three. Lead pass ahead to DuPont, loses control temporarily, gains it back. Takes it into the near right corner. Back out to Vendetta on the point. Back into DuPont. DuPont fires St. Ange. Gloves a wide shot. Gloves it and controls play wisely. 5-12 remaining. We are tied here at Wesleyan. 1-1. Both goals coming in the third period if you're just tuning in. Shot in front. Save St. Ange. Another shot save. Two Perfectly fired shots from close range. St. Ange holding his ground. Another shot by DuPont. Nothing to show. Shot again. Hits the side of the net. Oh, crazy bounces off the And now there. Indians able to break out. Young ahead. Lima with two point leg chances. Perslow gathers control ahead to Lima. Lima gains the zone. Look, shoots through a screen. Wide. Oh, Perslow just misses the rebound. Karam off the back boards. Indians now with a hanger. Can't get to him. Five on four now for the Rams. 45 seconds left in their power play. Lima looking to center. Blocked by the D. Now we have a one on one. Murphy checked off and he's checked in. They're going to say that play comes out of the zone. I don't know if I'd agree with that, but I'm not wearing the stripes tonight. It looks like he was pushed into the goal. But it is what it is. So, face-off here in the neutral zone. In the Cheshire half of the ice. 4-10 remaining. Rams still on a 5-on-4 power play. The Indians. Rink wide. Stevens. Stevens carries in. Drop pass to Vitali. Back to Stevens. Shot. Save St. Ange. Tough angled shot, but he got it off nonetheless. St. Ange playing very aggressive, cutting off the angle on every shot. Really, really showing a lot of confidence out there. And why shouldn't he have it? He does, Jeff. You're right. He, he definitely comes outside that paint. They got to make a move there. Uh, it's the way to beat it. Yep. Shot right on goal and off the faceoff. Rams looking. Ten seconds remaining on their power play. 
uh, Klanica controlling in the near right corner. Oh, tries a pass into uh, Lima. Goes a little too far. Penalty about to expire, and it does. Ram shot. Try to redirect. Here comes Murphy Three racing down the sideline. He's got... Wow, he fanned on it. He had uh, Danny Perslow all over him on that. I don't think I'd be wrong in saying Perslow got a little... Uh little wrist on that one, <laughs> but... <laughs> got a little away with... I would have done the same thing. Nothing wrong with that. 12. Harwell now. Oh, my God. Oh, there it is! Is that a one-timer? No, he literally shot it from the goal line, backhand. Tough-angled shot. It was supposed to be a pass, and Romano didn't see it. Went off Romano skating in. Just a heartbreaker goal. Wow. 3.06 remaining. Watertown Pomperog with the game winner on a tough angled shot that I just don't think Scotty saw go off his skate right. Coach Sunquist complaining a little bit there about the celebration right in front of the uh, Cheshire bench, but you know what? Emotion's emotion. They're going to celebrate wherever they end up. Yeah. There's nothing uh, intended there. A heartbreaking loss here for the Rams. Another OT one goal loss. We got the game. What? One from two. Twelve from two. Oh. So the game winning goal, folks, for the Indians. Number twelve, Earl Harwell, on a real sharp angle shot from the uh, right circle to the left of uh, Romano. And the Watertown Pomperog fans cheering their team, which is now 6-0 in, in play. Some of the Cheshire players uh, going over with extra congratulations to uh, Watertown. It's a great show of uh, sportsmanship there. Tough, tough, tough for Cheshire now to keep their head up. Uh, I, I couldn't think of a more heartbreaking goal I've ever seen scored in overtime. Literally just came around right right from the goal line. He, it was like he just turned around, backhanded it randomly at the net. Yeah. Scott was not expecting it at all. And oh, boy. In. At any rate, folks, so for SportingNewsCT.com, again, a recap of the scoring. At 3.53 remaining, uh, Watertown takes a 1-0 uh, lead in the third period. Murphy from Bizier with 13 seconds left. Lima from Klanica ties up the score, takes it into overtime. And then in overtime with, I believe, 340, re about 340 remaining, number 12, Earl Harwell for the Indians, a senior center, fires a tough angled shot right along the goal line, hits the goalie's skate, and uh, just had it on a funny angle, I think, and it just snuck in. So tough loss for the Rams. Uh, very nice uh, finish for the Indians. And uh, that will be it here from uh, Wesleyan University for SportingNewsCT.com. I'm Dick Naramore alongside with Jeff Bausch and Scott Duff on film. Good night, all.